thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Sophia Luisa's So Zoom In. It's so good to see you. You are an actor and you've done several big films and you are also a country musician. You play guitar, write your own music and your own lyrics. Right now you are a traveling man, right? <laughs> I, music? Yeah, quite a quite a bit, especially more with the music right now than the the film stuff, which is pretty backwards. Well, um, where are you right now? Right this minute, I'm in beautiful southern Utah. Nice. Cool. Yeah, which was beautiful a few months ago. Now it's gotten really hot. Well, it so is it, hot. Yeah. Now, you're, how often are you playing your music? Um, okay, so I... You know, there's a weird definition of that. Okay, so how often am I doing gigs? I'm doing about two gigs a month right now. And then every once in a while, somebody sets up what I call a mini tour. Right. Like we just got back from a mini tour up through Idaho and and down and everything like this. Um, but I'm also in my garage is set up a whole... Wow. I don't even know how to explain this. Is it like your own studio that you have set up and you perform live or? Well, sometimes there's only one way to do this. Yeah. Let's take a walk. I love it. Let's see it. Okay. And I don't know how to make this little thing reverse. You know how you do on your iPhones? Right. Where you make them reverse but I don't know how to do that here okay. so I'm going to do the best I can with this whoops what did I just do wrong what do you mean I, I still see you I did something wrong because I no longer see you ah okay I'm wait, still wait wait wait, wait, wait. Okay. zoom meeting what I what I did is I hit something wrong on the thing uh -huh. sure Oh, look for the little blue icon, little blue camera icon, because I've done that before too, where like another screen pops up. Yes. I'll edit this part out. <laughs> no, you got to show him. This guy's an idiot, man. He don't even no. have He's a talented, creative soul. Okay, so what if I do this? Okay, do you see me now? Yes. For some reason, a lot of times if I just close all the windows, it did it. Okay. What happened was you somehow got put behind my yeah. windows. Okay. Okay. So, so this is, if you step out into my garage. Oh, there's the Harley. Love it. There's the Harley sitting there. Okay. And these are all my, uh, these, these are all my t-shirts uh -huh. and stuff. Right. And then there's a stage. You can see the stage. Awesome. I, I can't see what you see. I see the stage, it looks so uh, cool. The whole band sets up there. And mm -hmm. then there's all the lighting. Uh -huh. My mixer guy sets back here. Uh -huh. And then I will introduce you to the Tom Proctor Show One Man Band, which is a suitcase. I love it. Looks like a suitcase, but as I play the suitcase on that end, yeah. On this end, I don't know if you can see this or not. Oh, wow, look at that. So while I'm playing guitar with my hands, I can't tell what's working here. So I Start playing the drum, is so cool, I love it. Got a one-man band going. Uh, that's fantastic, wow. And that's, uh, so, <laughs> Was, was that just too weird? Did I just ruin your show? No, I love it. That's so cool. Very creative. Well, it, it, it started, these stages are in eight, eight by four sections. Mm -hmm. And it started with the fact that COVID shut down basically everything. My gig. So I'm going to, while we're doing this, I'm going to show you the rest of the story. So if we open this big door, so here 
is my forerunner. Aww. All wrapped with Tom Proctor's show, Outlaw Country Music on it. Very cool. And then out here is the same thing, only now I am really glared. I can't tell what I can see here. Okay, this is the trailer. Nice. It's all wrapped. Very cool. And inside the trailer will go, it fits easily, all that equipment that you see there. Right. Plus the Harley so I can ride with locals. Right. You got to do that. Yeah, I'm not leaving without the Harley. So do you load everything yourself or do you have help or? Well, it started out, I was loading it by myself doing the one man band thing. When mm -hmm. COVID hit, and just shut everybody down. And you know me well enough to know what happens if somebody tells me I can't do something. <laughs> they may as well tell you to do it. Right? <laughs> it's going to be like, oh, yeah, let's see how that works out for you. Exactly. And so I, I got that trailer set up. And I said, I'll just throw my own events in parking lots anywhere. I'll just make my own concerts right good and then as i went to do that different cities said oh you can't do that we you, you can't we're not allowing any events oh and i thought oh that's funny and the first thing i did was hmm well walmart's having a black friday sale which apparently is not an event uh -huh. So I showed up in the parking lot, set up my stages, battery powered amps, and just played music. Oh, and wow. quite an audience and quite a response from the audience. Very cool. And, uh, and then I just started mm -hmm. setting things up. And then I would go into businesses where I think, yeah, I'll play until I get arrested. And <laughs> what happened across the board is the businesses said, uh, what would it cost us to have you come back and do this again? nice and they said but we can't officially have you come back and do this again they said just let's just put it this way we're willing to tip x amount of dollars if you ever show up here again nice but it can't be a planned event because that would be illegal oh you can't promote it then yeah well you can i can promote it by just using my social media say i'm going to be playing this parking lot somewhere <laughs> right. i'm going to be playing this and it's still not an event because I'm just setting up and playing in the parking lot. Right. Wow, that's a, so you're making new stuff. That you, you're being creative. You're still going out there and doing it and entertaining people and doing what you love. That's fantastic. I love that. Yeah, I think the minute you can be stopped from creating, mm -hmm. I would rather be stopped from breathing. Well, every part Most of us would. If you can... Uh, I, I noticed also in our industry, and you probably noticed this too, I'd had several friends, people that I knew personally, mm -hmm. that wound up committing suicide over COVID and the effects that it had. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that's been kind of ignored. And then I noticed that uh, across the board, the friends, you know, I thought, well, that's just the entertainment industry. It's ups and downs and depressing. It's, uh, whatever, but I, I also noticed that the majority of them were veterans. And then I teamed up with a guy, uh, John Gossett, who has the Life's Worth Living Foundation, mm -hmm. which is suicide prevention for our veterans. And I saw one of his seminars and the things that he does, and, and he, it, it was like priceless clues, information, and mm -hmm things that I, that started me thinking, shit, you know, maybe if I knew those signs, knew those questions, maybe, you know, yeah. something could have been different, you know? And he quickly let me know, no, do not think that way. All you can do is move on. So we, I, I had started uh, Country Roads Music Festivals just before COVID and got shut down by COVID. And so we fired them up again 
Mm-hmm. And now all country roads music festivals have are a benefit for Life's Worth Living Foundation. Wow, that's that's fantastic. It, it really is because it it while it sounds very heroic of me stepping in and helping all the uh, veterans and everything, it also is very narcissistic of me because it also gives me. It's like this. So everybody says, "Okay, you're you do, you go, you're just put out another album. I just put out two more albums. To be a country star, you got to be, you know, twenty year old, very sexy person with a lot, you know, blah blah blah, and this and this and this and all the things that I'm not, you know, you know. I'll I'll be honest with you. I wear cowboy boots two hours on stage. I can't wait to get the sons of bitches off, and then I'm soaking my foot, uh, especially that bad one." And um, uh, you, you think you you got to do this, you got to do that. Well, I've hooked up with a band of guys that have, my band has played for some of the tops, Toby Keith. They were Jimmy Dean backup. They back up Carrie Underwood at, at the stadium and everything like this. And these guys are, are here in this small town of St. George. And they said, well, we want to be your band. And I said, why? You got a good gig going. You're the, you're the backup band for every known star that comes to Tuacon or comes into the uh, things here. And they said, we don't want to be the known backup band. We want to be the band. We don't want to catch the touring musician. We want to be the band of the touring musician. And we like your music. We want to be your band. Nice. And they are just so talented. You know, uh, I mean, these are real musicians. I'm, I'm not what I would call a real musician. Although if I hang around these guys enough, it, it is rubbing off. I've learned bar chords. I've learned what the names of the chords are that I play in. Um, well, you know. You've been playing guitar though since you were a kid. You picked up a, kid, a guitar when you were little, right? And you just started playing? No. I won the guitar in an arm wrestle eight years ago. Oh, really? Okay, so now I have this image of you as a little kid holding a guitar. There, there's a picture that went out online when uh, we, when people first talked about me, uh, when I did my music, and it's a picture of me playing a three Mickey Mouse guitar with three strings on it. Uh-huh. And that picture, it, it's one that made everybody think I'd been playing since I was a little kid. It was me playing for my grandmother who was dying of cancer. Mm-hmm. And she was... Uh, the only real psychic I've ever known. She was a seer. She could tell the future. And she would tell me, if Tommy, if you will just sing and 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 play guitar, if you'll just sing, you will you will not be poor anymore. Mm-hmm. And you know, and I would sit and sing songs to her. And you in the picture, I'll have to send it to you. You can see there's a glove on the ground behind me. That glove was to pick coal up and put in the stove because she was always cold and our whole house was heated by uh, coal at the time. But in listening to her, I, I formed a band with my older brother, but I was the drummer. And I toured, I did GMA tours. I always played as a drummer and was always singing from behind the drum set, which is really hard to connect to an audience from behind the drum set. Right. And then... Uh, but I was also deathly allergic to cigarette smoke. So, you know, I, I had a little puke bucket back by my drum set. I'd be throwing up and going out during breaks. And I just kept thinking, you know, grandma was wrong on this one thing. You know, music is just not my thing. And I hit the acting industry and then won a guitar. And it was a, the thing that made me think to keep it and play it is when I go coming up, I loved uh, Tanya Tucker and hated Glenn Campbell for having her for a girlfriend. <laughs> and Glenn Campbell had this ovation guitar, which was the first carbon fiber backed guitar that uh, had just this, this unique, deep, warm sound. And the guitar I won in the arm wrestle was an ovation guitar. Wow. And tell you what's really like the universe screaming this at me is I also got contacted by a company in Provo, Utah, who makes full carbon fiber guitars, a company called Close. And uh, 
it was it was kind of a funny thing because I you know you get these calls and they don't leave a message and you know that's a sales call right so I just I just that number would come in and it was a New York number and I just wouldn't take it because I knew it was a sales call and then every once in a while you get in the mood where you're just going to screw with the salesman you know what I mean like sometimes I'll answer the phone and speak Cambodian and or you know something that just throws them clear off their game uh, or act like I'm making a large order and then tell them to put it on their credit card. And, uh, and so I answered the phone and the guy goes, is this Tom Proctor? And I said, was you calling Tom Proctor? And he goes, well, we think we're calling Tom Proctor. And I said, so you always just call random numbers and think maybe that's who will answer it. He goes, well, we're, we're pretty sure this is Tom Proctor. The number was very hard to get. And I says, how did you get the number? He said, well, we tried contacting you through your social media, but your social media won't let us send messages unless we're friends. And I'm sure Tony set that up when he's my social media guy. Nice. Uh -huh. Because I've had problems, even this last concert, I had a stalker show up at the last concert all the way from Florida. Oh, wow. It, it was, yeah, this woman I've been, I had seven restraining orders against her. Oh, and uh, oh yeah, she threatened my mother. My mom had to change her phone number, blah, blah, blah. And suddenly she shows up at a concert. You know, all the restraining orders, of course, have expired. Wow. But anyway, you can edit that out, too. That's bad. That sounds like a movie right there. That, no, that's negative juju. Uh, so yeah. anyway, um, you know, so th this company says, well, we, we finally got a hold of somebody, mutual friend, said, we just want to give this guy a guitar because I do so much on social media with the guitars. Yeah. And, a guy out of Canada built me one that's a really cool hillbilly sounding guitar and it, it's called the King Vulture and so I've, I've got several guitars that have been custom made for me because they apparently think I'm a real musician you are <laughs> no I, I am serious just since this band I'm actually learning what my chords are called and this last time in Nashville okay the first time in Nashville I went and recorded I played the, the scratch tracks on all my songs. We did three songs a day. This time we were trying to track. We tracked three songs. We spent uh, a week doing one album. This time we were doing two albums in a week, which means we had to track nine songs in a day. Okay. So they said, you don't even need to play. We're just going to put you in the booth. You'll hear it. You'll sing it. Lay down the track. Well, without saying anything to me, they changed the key to where they thought it better suited my voice. Right. So I get back here. I send my songs out to my band. They come in knowing the songs in a different key. Oh, okay. And, and see, I am so not a musician to the point that if you change key in a song, I won't know. I will change key in my voice without ever knowing. I just hear the melody and we'll we'll sing it. Yeah, but, that's called being a musician. Yeah. Without knowing what what number it is, you know. Oh, yeah. They've they got this thing. They said, "Well, it's a it's a four six five and a four this and a diamond and you know do this for so many bars." And I said, "I don't even know what the I said." I, I, and you're going to change after four bars. I said, I don't know about you guys. I go into one bar. I sit on the stool until I fall off. And if they let me in the next day, I stay at that same bar. So uh, this changing bars, I, you know, what? Did they throw you out of one? <laughs> and so, um, so it's really been a growing experience now because now I'm learning bar chords I'm learning what the chords are and happen to relearn all my songs in a different key okay so it's like having to force yourself to to go there and I don't know if you can see that or not oh, this is it's like wow like, literally fingernails on the top of my fingertips now. guitar player <laughs> yeah. so are you writing your own music all the time your own songs but yeah and and that was the other thing I tried to uh, get this um manager in Nashville and uh, it was really funny because she says, so, so who's, your, who, who, who's doing your buying? Who's doing your licensing? I was buying what? I don't know what you're talking about. She says, who are you buying your songs from? I said, I don't buy my songs. I write my songs. 
Right. So you're going to record 20 songs that you wrote. And I said, yes. She goes, well, that's scary. I said, why is that scary? She goes, well, she goes, I'm looking at you right now. You're, you, you recorded an album not two years ago. And now you're telling me you got two more albums worth of materials that you wrote. She goes, songwriters think they can write great songs, tons of great songs, but it, and they may or may not, but they, every song they write is not great for them. And I said, did you listen to the first album? And she said, yeah. And I said, no, you didn't, or we wouldn't be having this conversation because I wrote the first album. Right. And I wrote the second album and I wrote the third album. And uh, once, uh, once she heard, she came over to Omni Studio and heard some of what we was doing, then she was just all in and it's pretty crazy. Well, okay. I know the last time we talked, you were working on a movie. You mm -hmm. know? And how, how did that work out? Because this was just before the whole shutdown. This was before you, you took off, you left California. Yeah, life is full of lessons. Yes, it is. Sometimes the lesson is when somebody or everybody or anyone tells you you can't do something, you may want to just go, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> you say that never. <laughs> All right, so yeah. how, how the movie turned so, out? So um, the movie is looking really good. It's been a long process because uh, it's being funded out of my pocket, which has gotten really empty. And um, but but surprisingly, be uh, I, my biggest worry was being able to get good acting talent because we're. I was in Southern Utah. I was, I was taking care of my dad before he passed and everything like that. So I had all that going on. But I, I was amazed that there was a pool of really good, amazing actors here because of the Tuacon school, the acting and things like that. Some of them were a little theatrical and you have to pull them back. But we got a really good job done with all of them. Okay. Uh, we, as I'm going through it now, I... You know, the I should have done list is huge. Is huge. Mm -hmm. But we got a good little movie. Okay. And, um, and, and it, it wouldn't be embarrassing if the should have done list was something that was very technical. Like, um, you know, I, I don't even know where to go. But the should have done list on this one is Oh, we shot that whole thing with no inserts. We shot, oh, <laughs> oh, we got this, you know. Technology, which is a nightmare, also can save you, though. Right. One scene in particular where we're editing the thing and we suddenly realize, I've got no close-up on my lead actress in a whole scene, the entire scene. Um, now, in my defense, I was also in the scene and directing. So, okay. More challenging. That's a lame excuse. But at least you were a camera person, too. That would have been really challenging. Camera, directing, acting. I mean, so. yeah. And, and the, the, but the one advantage we had is we had shot on the uh, 6K pocket cinema. Mm -hmm. So, when we punched in on that close up and literally created the close up, there's nothing lost. Good, nice, good, good. All right, so um, do you plan on having it released anytime soon or what do you want to do with it now that it's... Right now, the schedule it's on is probably end of Ju July, mm -hmm. the last part of July, I'll go back to California and set with the editor for three days and just make the final things. Okay. And then it goes to back to South Jordan to, to get uh, sound design and composing. And I'm told we can do that and color correction at the same time. Oh, wow. okay. Being a film guy, that's like above my pay grade to understand that. You know, I... A lot of technical stuff. Wait, if the film's over there getting this, how's it over here getting that, you know? Okay. But... Uh, apparently, those two things can be done at the same time. Uh, can be writing music for it yourself. What's that? Can be writing any music, any 
school any of your oh, thing is loaded with music oh, it is uh, yeah the whole thing it was i wrote it around some low really nice locations that i had had two houses uh really one is a really nice house and the other one is like a three million dollar house here anywhere else and so but we didn't have full flood access to the three million dollar house right but we st shot establishing shots in the backyard pool so there there are more houses than there are actors in the film because one one house the front yard is comes out the backyard of another house right. and the swimming pool of one house is in another house and you know so there was a lot of uh creative shooting that way and it, but it, but what i'm seeing of the film it uh is turning out quite well and i will tell you uh -huh. the, the union that is the worst to work with anywhere is the lizards union the lizards union yes we had a lizard in the first of this movie and to get him to do what we needed him to do, you want to do it. Number one, it took five lizards, all lookalikes. Of course. One decided he didn't want to be in the movie at all and just. Okay. <laughs> again. The other one uh -huh. decided he was going to remain so perfectly still that it looked like a toy lizard. Okay. He was camera shy, deer in the headlights. And then we finally found the lizard that minus the sunglasses just definitely wanted to be a movie star. <laughs> I love it. So what is the title of your movie? It's called Guilt. Guilt, okay. The story uh, is about a country musician played by myself. And uh, he gets a younger, much younger trophy wife. And his trophy wife is going to run off with his stage manager. And, you know, old guys get young gals and just can't figure out why they run off with somebody their own age. <laughs> Imagine that. Uh, but uh, the, and then the whole thing is, it develops to where he decides to kidnap her and keep her in his storage unit so she can't leave with the, the man and something goes wrong and she gets killed Ooh, okay. and he blames the the killing on a hiking trip anyway there's a lot of interesting twists right got a detective following him and and by the end of the movie you wonder if his wife is in actuality dead and just a ghost or if she is still alive oh wow that sounds very interesting yeah. and it's a full-length feature yeah. Okay. Sounds very that, exciting. That is the problem right now. We did so much. Like there's this just him being lost making a sandwich, something as simple as making lunch. Right. And the scene is way too long. Mm -hmm. But it takes almost takes that to realize that he's lost that you know he don't he's not sure what he's doing so so there's there's some of that that well we'll go over with the editor and decide how much of this can we cut and still get that point across right cool sounds very exciting i look forward to seeing it it's very cool it, it, it reminds me of this scene that i was trying to tell this guy so you gotta cut this scene because it was just dripping water and as it progressed on, then you realize that drip, drip of the water is what drives this other person crazy. Wow. Well, so you can't really cut that scene. Oh. Because otherwise, so what? The water was dripping. Everybody's water drips. <laughs> well, it sounds like a very exciting film. I really look forward to seeing it. And I hope great things happen for you because of it. So what is happening? Okay. So you're thinking about coming back to LA soon to finish up the movie. And then what, what's on your agenda for that after that? Well, I'm, uh, 
I've got to find a balance between my music and my movies. And this is my problem. My movie work really pays for my music. Right. And um, it used to be, there was a time when if you were just really good and people liked your music, a record label picked it up and blah, blah, blah. That, that time is gone. And all this stuff, uh, my song Working Man got over 10,000 downloads. And which if I have that like 90 cents on those, like I thought I did with Distro Kid and everything, you know, 10,000 downloads is a, a sum of money. Right. Until you find out some of those downloads when you get, get on Spotify and you get on these other things, you've signed off in their small print that that can go to Amazon. So if you have Amazon Prime, you can download my music for free. Amazon Prime is not going to send me a cut of that. Buy an iPhone 12 and you can have my music for free. And yet I'm not getting a check out of from iPhone, Apple. Hmm. And so... Uh, it, it was a time, it was a time where you did the concerts to promote your movies and people made money on the royalties of the movie, of the music. Now people give their music away to build an audience and make money on their concerts. Wow. And that's a tougher business because that means you got to be on your feet performing. All the time. You know, it's not like throughout COVID, Man, I was just so grateful for all the, I had some really nice residual checks come in from work that I had done. Mm -hmm. I, I won't see that on the music. But the music is what I'm most passionate about because I'm a little bit of a narcissist. Okay, a lot of a narcissist. Okay, a total narcissist, whatever. <laughs> Get over it, I am. Um, and I... Like if I could just do, if I could make the living doing theater that I do doing movies, I would do nothing but theater. Cause there's an instant connection to the crowd. There's an instant responses, the instant energy. And, and that's what I get from the music. Whereas my movies, I'll get, I'll be sitting there and somebody will text me, oh my God, I just saw you in this and you were wonderful, and I think. I wish I would have been there to see you see me in that, you know? Right. It's not that wow. instant. Wow. Great stuff. Well, so you have an agent and manager. Are they, you know, wondering where where is Tom? You know, are they sending you out? Even though you are in Utah, are you auditioning a lot right now? Right now I'm ad I'm auditioning a whole lot. And it doesn't really, I just realized that's blaring you out. Um uh, it doesn't seem to matter where you're at. That's the one thing that COVID did. You used to, especially commercial auditions, you could only get them if you were in Los Angeles. Right. Other states would, would like uh, Louisiana, uh, Georgia, and places where they get a lot of their talent out of Los Angeles, they would take videotaped auditions from Los Angeles. But Los Angeles didn't take videotaped auditions. It was like, no, come into the casting or, you know, either live here or go home. Right. And so it's uh, now it don't matter where you're at as long as you have mm -hmm. strong enough internet. And, and when I first moved here to work with my dad and stuff, uh, I didn't have strong enough internet to be able to, I, I compressed a file, I swear to God, an audition down to 10 meg and couldn't get it to go in an email. The internet was just not there. That's what's happening. But, yeah. And so, so now, now well, there, do you think there's new houses up around us and everything. And so now I can, I can, no problem. We transfer. Okay. Now, do you think um, self tapes are going to be the thing nowadays? I mean, or do you think you'll ever go back to? I don't think it'll ever go back. I think um, 
because casting has learned first off they don't have to own a camera they don't have to own a physical location they don't have to own anything but a laptop now right why would they want to pay for an office space there's no office to come into no reason to come into an office well callbacks right um, even callbacks are done. The ones I've had are done on zoom. Oh, really? Wow. Okay. Well, do you think it loses something by doing that? Or do you think it doesn't really matter? Uh, I will tell you this. My percentages went way down by doing taped auditions. Oh, really? Some actors, their percentages go way up because they do, they can do it over and over again and pick their best performance and send it in. Right. But I have always said the audition is over by the time you say that first line. If I get in the room, and this has happened several times, mm -hmm. I get in the room, introduce myself, talk for a minute, and I've had them ask me, are you available these days? Prior to the audition. Mm -hmm. I've had time where I walked in the room, talked my way into a role and didn't audition. Right. Things are constantly changing. Yeah. And we're starting to see a little bit of that because now in your slates, instead of saying, hi, I'm Tom Proctor, I'm six foot one, blah, 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 they want you to tell a little something about yourself. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, that's what you read in the post office is not true. Different guy, he just looks like me. <laughs> So how many how many seconds do they give you for that? Um, they they leave that open. They don't care. That, you know, they usually, if you rambled, I'm sure they would. You know, that should be about a 15, 30 second or under. You know, thing. If you can't say who you are in three sentences, there's something radically wrong. Well, you'd be surprised. <laughs> Look at our president. <laughs> I didn't say if you couldn't say three seconds. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. Uh, I'll probably cut that part out. <laughs> I thought you lived in California. I do live in California. <laughs> Los Angeles, <laughs> a lot of people. Because <laughs> most of the time, Californians love them, God bless them, but Okay, I have to be honest, you know, it's like the man is like, he can't speak. Yeah, and, and, and this won't get political. This is all about you, Tom. You know, this is about, this is about you being- Well, we did get political. I am running for president. See, you'd make a great candidate. Or come, come be governor in California. I, no, I'm not that crazy. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna run from pre, for president because it's obvious that you don't really need any credentials. Right. Yeah, it's, it's all about who you know. Yeah. It's all about who you know. You know, so, but no, you look great. You look wonderful. And you haven't been in LA in a long time. And I think you've been out in the open roads doing a lot of good. All right, let's talk about your Harley. You know, it's like you're out all the time on your bike, right? And I know there's a story behind that. I would love to hear it. Oh, the, the, the thing is about the roads out here. Yeah. Okay. And I, I mean, I rode when I was in California a lot, but you had to ride for your life, is what I used to tell people. You ride for your life, you can get some good areas to ride. Yeah. And that's driving downtown through LA. You just got to watch yourself because nobody else is. Right. Out here, I can jump on the bike and I'm already headed for. I'm, I'm already in the mountain. I'm already in, you know, I'm already riding up beautiful country. Now, right now, the only thing I don't like about it, like my last concert, oh. uh, we got a song called 47 Harleys. Yeah. And it's one of the new releases. And um, so I start a argument with the girl singer in the first song. And the audience and saying, who has the sexiest booth? And I've got on these big rock star monster biker boots with 
skulls and everything on them. And she has on this really nice pair of cowboy boots, but that's how she's absolutely gorgeous and all of that stuff. Okay. The audience was, well, who's, who's got the sex? I can't have somebody on stage with sexier boots than I got. Who's got the sexiest boots, me or it? And, and I said, all, all those in favor of me. And there's a small rumble. All those in favor of it. Woo! I said, that's it. I'm out of here. And I leave the stage. She does a song. And then when I come back, I'm pulled in and I, I told the guys I was doing this. They says, I don't think you can do that. I, I, should we talk to the city? Should we talk to the event promoter and everything like that? I said, there's a sidewalk right there. Nick, you come here, you come here. I'm going to come right in on that and ride the Harley right up on stage. And I had my wireless mic on with me. Right. So as I came in, the minute the mic got in range, you got the sound of that Harley blasting all over the thing. And I fly in with the Harley and walk back on stage. I said, she might have the sexiest boots, but I know how to make an entry. <laughs> <laughs> And That's awesome. Now that backfired on me on in uh, Mississippi. We set up a stage, only this time riding on to the stage. Right. And gonna slide the bike sideways, get off, grab the bike. The guitar's already tuned and everything like this. The lead guitar says, I'm gonna be out here doing this. I said, No, you're not. He goes, Why? And I says, Because I don't want to hit you. He goes, well, you just hit the mark seven times. I don't think you're gonna hit me. And I said, Well, all it takes is somebody to spill a drink mm. or a sprinkler to go off, my tire wet. All, there's just too many variables that I'm not in control. If you stay back, it, if I miss the mark and slide off the stage, one guy on a motorcycle is gone. That's all. Right. I don't, you know, I, 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 you know, give me a reason. I can shoot you in the face with one hand, eat pizza and sleep well that night. But it would, to just accidentally hurt somebody, it just would just tear me up. Right. But uh, so they, they all agreed we're doing this and everything like this. So I come in that next thing. Well, the sound guy had decided the subwoofers needed to be under the stage. Right. And to do that, he had to remove two of the cross bracings on the stage. Uh -huh. So I come up with a thousand pounds of Harley. Right. And slide that sucker sideways and that whole stage goes... Ooh. almost wow. One. wow I went what and, and everybody went what the fuck happened wow well, no but, one got hurt though right uh -huh. no one got hurt no no but I let the sound guy know you don't never change the stage once <laughs> you don't change my setup once I've landed a Harley on there right Wow. Well, thank God you're okay. Yeah. Thank God. All right. So yeah, I want to ask you, you had mentioned about your grandma being mm -hmm. psychic, that she was a seer, and I know she's passed on. Um, do you ever still feel her with you? I mean, do you ever feel her like cheering you on or encouraging you to keep going? Yes, I do. Yeah. And my dad now that he's gone too. Uh, about your dad. In his last days, I found out some things about my dad that I did not know and um uh one was he was a singer and he sung in his choir and he had a really good voice and the teacher singled him out to do a solo and he was so excited about doing the solo right and when he got up in the small auditorium to do it he froze could do it and that's why he liked having me come sing to him and going to all my shows because it he got to live it through me. I found out he was always giving me socks. And I'm sorry. No, it's all right. And I thought, why does he think I can't afford my own socks? I mean, I, I still, if you see in my drawers, three of them are full of socks. Nobody has as many socks as I have. 
And it was because when my dad was a kid, his dad had socks, but the kids couldn't have socks because kids weren't worth getting socks for. Mm. And all those years, he'd say, you need some socks? I know I'm dad, fine dad. And, no, I think you need some socks. No. I didn't know you were saying you were worth it. That's true. beautiful have you written a song about him that's in every song in working man he's the both the working man and the retired man in mm -hmm. a new song that i got it's a tribute to him because he was in love with my mother and he waited for the asshole she married to disappear which was my biological father mm -hmm. And um, my, my father uh, was my father before he was my father. Because as a kid growing up, he was the one that taught me how to catch ditch, fish out of the ditch. I mean, there should be trout there. Mm -hmm. He was the one that gave me all the ideals of what a man should be and could be. I never quite lived up to it, but he did. Uh, and and the ado him adopting me was never registered in his brain. Give me an example. I always thought my dad was a quiet man, never raised his voice, couldn't tell a lie about a Christmas present. And um, I always thought that if anybody messed with him, I would just have to beat him up because he's a pussy. And we were coming down Geneva Road on 1600 North, and anybody knows where that is. It's a, teal, it's a dead end, goes nowhere. Some guy ran that stop sign going towards Geneva Road, which I don't know where he thought he's going because it's a dead end. It's a T. Don't go nowhere off the other side. Mm -hmm. And I was in the back seat of the van with my mom, and dad was in the front, and he hit that van, and both airbags went off. And my mom had just recently had a heart surgery. A, pig valve put in and we used to make a lot of pig jokes to her and uh, uh, asking her if she felt like some bacon and um, all this stuff and uh, the van hit this uh, pole so the door on my side to get out was jammed mm. and mom's airbag went off dad was getting the airbag out of her face and this guy was running at my mom screaming at her calling her every kind of name Oh, wow. my dad jumped out of the car and I just thought oh my god he's going to get his ass stomped before I get there yeah. it, it, there's no hope for this to go anywhere good and I come flying around the van just in time to see and I trained professional fighters and boxers and MMA guys and I watched this guy get hit seven times with the most educated left hand and an overhand right that put him out like a light. I was in shock. I was totally in shock. And I said, dad, where the hell did that come from? I said, you've never fought. He said, I had to one other time. <laughs> I pretty much figured that one other time went that same way. Wow. And I said, I had no idea you could fight. He walked past me looking at me like this. He goes, where do you think you get it from, son? <laughs> In his head, he never accepted that I was adopted. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. Me too. Yeah. That's so cool. So... Are you are you still fighting? Are you, I mean, you still train? No, no. I I do some right now. I do some. I'm I've gone back into some fight workouts on my own just because mm -hmm. uh, that's what I know when it comes to cutting up and losing weight. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the the easiest thing for me to do is the jujitsu because I don't have to be on my feet. I'm on the ground grappling, mm -hmm. and you need to do that the kickboxing i've got one bad ankle that i blew the foot off and put back on a long story 
Um, but, you know, so I still use it that way, but my, my entire focus is on my music and, and I'm even more focused on that now because that's what my dad wanted for me. He wanted, he wanted me to make it, to, to go for it. Well, you are, you are doing it. All right. So when you come back to California and take care of your film, are you going to head back out to Utah or anywhere else just to continue being on the road with your music? Um, you know, it's, that's a good question. I've had several thoughts, several ways, because to do what I do here in California is so difficult. The, the thing that was easy in California was you can put a band together there like crazy, but you're going to pay $25 an hour for rehearsal space. You're going to pay for a storage space. Uh, my apartment in LA, which I, I still have, it's sublet out to my son right now. And he's, he's going to move later on this year. They're going to Norway. Um, but a, a 480 square foot studio apartment now is down to 1800 a month since COVID. Before COVID, it was up to 2100 a month. Wow. You know, I mean, you live in LA, you know the cost there is phenomenal. Right. Uh, this, the place where I'm at now, and you saw the garage, the garage is bigger than my apartment. Cost me less than that. Wow. Well, I think you have a great garage too. What a fun and space I, to it's off my back. <laughs> and what? I didn't hear that. That porch. <laughs> well, you, you seem like you're really, you fit in really well there. It seems like you're happy there. You seem like very relaxed and chill and you know, just. Like, it, it's, it's where the, where I grew up. It's the type of people I grew up with. And um, here, here's what's really funny. After my concert where I rode the motorcycle and I was just busy as hell. And, uh, and this would only happen here. So I leave the concert. I tell the guys, yeah, I'm good. I'll see you back at the house. I'll see you in Manila. And I, you know, the bike don't have a gas gauge on it. It's go miles and I forget to keep track of the miles and I ran out of gas on the bike. Mm -hmm. already dehydrated from the show. Right. I have to walk to a gas station, get a thing, get gas, go back to the bike, I'm back to the bike. And this gas thing that I got has a fancy little thing on it that won't work. And I wound up having to, you know, it's supposed to stop it for drip proof, a fancy little shit to do thing that some gizmo and the fuck it. I break that off and just wound up dumping and spilling it all over the tank old school way. So I'm sitting there waiting for the gas to dry off before I start oh. to buy because I think I've got nothing to barbecue. So I don't think I'm having a fire. Mm -hmm. And um, this very beautiful, small woman, probably in her 40s, stops and says, Are you okay? Do you need, is there, can I give you a ride somewhere? You look broke down. Oh, wow. And all I could think about was one night on the freeway, I can't remember where I was coming back from Long Beach. Mm. And it was late. A young lady was broke down a tire and everything like this. And I stopped to help her. And there was no one on the road. Mm -hmm. And she just looked like I was going to murder and rape her. <laughs> That's California for you. And I said, do you have a phone? Do you have a way to call somebody? And she just got this, oh, crap. He knows my phone's dead. Look on her face. I said, okay, here's what I'm going to do. And I said, I touched my numbers. And I said, my phone's open. I'm going to set it on the back of your car. I'm going to walk back to my car. You call whoever you need in there to call. And uh, if you don't have friends that you can call, just 
call the non-emergency numbers on there, just put in N and non-emergency will come up. And you can call them, tell them the problem, whatever. Just if you, you know, because I know me, if you had me a phone, say call one of your friends, I'd go, I don't know their numbers. Right. Their numbers are on the phone. Right. <laughs> exactly. No reason. To know them. And so it just seemed like such a reversal. Yeah. Instead of running from me, she was all out. Can I give you a ride somewhere? And she's alone. Uh, the difference. That is the difference. Wow. See, that'd make an interesting movie. Put that, put both those situations in. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Of course, you have to throw a twist in there too. It's like, hmm. <laughs> you don't do that because you're a sick individual. <laughs> part of why I love you so much. <laughs> Oh, Tom, it's so great talking with you again. It's been such a long time and I'm so proud of you. You know, you have a passion and you're going for it. You know, so many people I know would rather stay, you know, being safe behind a desk, knowing that they get a paycheck and they're miserable, but you're doing something you love. And that means everything. And that's more than any amount of money. Well, thank oh, you. Yes, you but... I have really gone not so this time because usually, you know, as an actor, you have a savings built up that you save to get you between movies and all of that stuff. Well, that savings went on cameras and band gear and, you know. You're doing stuff you love, so it's an investment in you. And, you know, it, you keep at it and your grandmother's going to be right. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit and you just believe it and keep doing it. You know, don't let anything stop you. And you're not. And that's exciting. That's very exciting. Well, we got it set up now to where we're taking the cameras we bought for the movies. We got two of the Black Magics, and I've been talking with people. And there's, uh, you know, I, not liberty to say who, but one of the major reality show companies are interested in just really the garage show, just following the band. And part of what interested them in the drama and the band and what it's doing, what it's going through was the fact that they're not 20 years old. The fact that these guys are all at the age where you would think they start looking forward to retiring. And instead of looking forward to retiring, they're jumping on with this upcoming musician who's already so old he should be retiring rather than starting. And- uh, It keeps you young, Tom. It keeps you young. Exactly. That's what I look at it. I mean, it, it it's like, you know, I look around at the, the, the people, a lot of them and, and my age and older, what are they doing? They're like, they've already done what they're going to do with their life. And now they're doing nothing with their life. That's why you have to reinvent yourself. And that's what you keep doing. And and I don't think we really know what we're going to do with our life until we've done it. Yep. My life ain't done. So that means I ain't done it. <laughs> you got to keep going. Just keep living. Exactly. And well, one of the things I love about you too, is you have such a big heart and you are willing to help people at the drop of a hat, you know? And so wherever you're at, I know people around you are going to be safe. You know, because that's one thing that, you know, you really care about people. And even though you're pursuing your passion, which is also very exciting to me, you know, it's like you're, you're like this, this light for everyone, just kind of like, they're all going to be good. So no matter where you're at, where you're at, it's going to be good. And, and you know what, though, I find I have an amazing number of something that's just people and stuff that's decided to help me you know I mean I've got an album out but okay so now you go play bars and do this I mean the first one of our first gigs that we're doing with the festival is on September 9th 9-11 we're doing the electric theater what an appropriate date uh, and Nathan Osmond is coming down and opening for me. 
I, I'm, I'm opening for Nathan, actually. He's coming down and headlining. So that's a huge, another audience. At, you know, he's mm -hmm. kind of new country. I'm outlaw country. I, I say, we drink different beer. He said, I don't drink beer. I said, that'd be my point. <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. You're so awesome. Anyway, so if people want to follow you, they can go to where? Where's the best place to follow you? The thing that I need more than anything and I'm is uh, I need them to subscribe to the Tom Proctor Show on YouTube. Okay. At Tom Proctor Band on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And now I'm just getting ready to put together the Tom Proctor Show on Instagram, everything, because that's going to be our main thing. And it's going to entail so much. Right. Uh, can't promise that we'll stay politically correct. Okay. Uh, God be you. God be true to you. Right. I love it. More people need you. That a little authenticity never hurts. And it's not like I like I'm really siding politics wise or anything of that nature. Uh, I, one of the best compliments I ever had. A guy called me up. He's you know sent me a private message. He says, you know, from your comments you make, and that I can't tell if you're a Democrat or Republican. You got to make a stand. And I said, you can't tell if I'm. Republican. <laughs> and I said, thank you. Well, how about because I'm not about, the country? You know, <laughs> I, I, I'm American, and I I don't I don't vote for or believe in a party. Yeah, you don't buy into the bullshit. That's what yeah, I, I, don't, I, I don't buy into a person. I would like one that I can buy into. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't buy into a party. I would like a person that I can buy into. I haven't seen it yet. Um, you know, I, I told everybody else this. Hi, politics are like drugs. They're all bad choices. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is true. <laughs> I, I think That's it was not going to run so I can be, at least you would know for sure that that was a bad choice. Right? <laughs> Not doubt yourself. <laughs> All right, Tom. I'll, um, I'll put in the links below for this YouTube channel that they should follow you, subscribe to you, and listen to your music. And you, have you considered being on TikTok? TikTok yeah, is on TikTok. I understand that's quite the thing for musicians nowadays to be on TikTok. Every time, I, people keep telling me that. I go on TikTok, TikTok, talk tick, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and all I see is people talking like jackasses. And uh, everywhere. <laughs> What's that? Oh, that's every no TikTok. Yeah, I'll um I'll send you a link for it. You should check it, check it out because I understand it's great for music. And it can be great just to create you know, a little following about what you're doing. Well now isn't tick doesn't I, I've got a TikTok account that somebody set up, but uh isn't it mostly just it's everyone. Like real short things, right? 30 seconds, I think. You know, um you know, so short, but you know, put a little music on there, a little you know, clip of a latest song. You know, you and your Harley, you know, something like that. You, know, you, you get a following. People love people love getting on it. Um, a lot of people, even in our age group, and yes, you are older than me. <laughs> it's not just for kids. TikTok is. Well, uh, I don't. You're. I'm older than you, but I'm a big fat liar, so I don't have to admit it. <laughs> Hey, I'm proud of my age. I'm not going to say it, but hey. <laughs> okay, so I have a TikTok. I go right there. Okay, app, ask, ask app not to track. Allow it. Do I allow it to track? Oh, I, I never, I say never allow. No, so okay. they're already tracked on cell phones anyway. Uh, privacy poly, okay. All right, so TikTok is so great. Um, um, on me. Yeah, and you can um, just a few you can either, okay, so you can shoot videos and upload it, um, or you can upload photographs with the song, um, or you can just shoot straight from your phone that goes automatically onto TikTok. Okay, so how? To, okay, so wait a minute, wait a minute. We're gonna go on TikTok here. Right. Okay, so wait. Why won't that shut off? Okay, so how do I make a TikTok? All right, so. We've got inbox okay plus yeah shoot. shoot video right I'll shoot. allow access to camera uh -huh. okay allow access to microphone okay oh I know why I did that okay there you go. so 
Uh, this says 15 seconds, 60. Is it 60 seconds? You see, yeah. Okay. So Sophie is helping me do a TikTok. Say hi, Sophie. Hey, hi, everyone. No, I told you to say hi, Sophie. You're supposed to say hi, Sophie. I go by Sophia. Hi, okay. Sophia. There you go. That's <laughs> better. I think we got this. Okay, I know how to use TikTok now. Look the hell out. I'm coming on TikTok. And then yeah, I Yeah, babe. Yeah. There you go. You did, you did it. And then um, there's ways to add music to it. You can add your own music to it. Yeah, so. Oh, shit. Go. I can do all kinds of shit and just put my own music. If my, I have to put my music on my phone first, right? A, a lesson in TikTok. A little TikTok okay. tutorial. Here. I'll just get discard that one. I'll figure it out later. All right, cool. Tom Proctor is so awesome seeing you. Thank you so very much for your time on Sophia Luisa's So Zoom In. Subscribe to my show. And Tom, I hope you become a subscriber. I'll subscribe to you if you subscribe to me. <laughs> I will. And if you if you give it to me in an easy, easy copy-paste link, then I'll send uh -huh. it up to my social media as well. But what happens if I if I just type it myself? I'm dyslexic as hell. So okay. you won't get anything. Cut and paste, baby. Cut and paste. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. You have an awesome night, and I will talk to you soon. Mwah. Okay. Bye. You take care. Okay, bye-bye.